little hog talk here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, as Arkansas continues on the path of its spring sessions toward its red and white game. We got uh, Ty Hudson on the line from Pig Trail Network to help us break down the Hawks. Hey, Ty, how's it going? Yo, Mark, how you doing, man? I'm doing well. It's good to see you. Good seeing you, as always. Always like having you on here. Great discussion concerning Arkansas football. Three and seven last year, but much better than that. Uh, things in a good place. Sam Pittman uh, certainly has the attention of the state. No question about that as we head toward uh, fall camp here in the next couple months. But let's um, get caught up on what's happening this spring. So you took in last week's uh, scrimmage on Saturday. What were the big takeaways there? Well, um, it, it was not super eventful on the offensive side i know hog fans they just they just want to uh they, they want some life from the offense you know and it was something last year it was so mostly down the beginning of the year defense really uh took care of all the hard work and and really you could say the defense is why you won a few games and or well the three games that you won but the offense obviously kicked in eventually and uh, I think you know fans really wanted something from the offensive end in the spring scrimmage, and, and I had to remind people, you know, I've talked to a few family members since going to that scrimmage. Like, look, it is just scrimmage. Like, hold on, this is only a second scrimmage. We still got the rest of spring camp and fall camp, voluntary summer workouts, voluntary air quotations. There, we got a long ways to go, so no need to overreact. But yeah, the the offense was not stellar. Uh, it looked like. They, they, the, the, you know, KJ Jefferson and Malik Hornsby, both the, you know, the one and two quarterbacks were not in sync with the wideouts outside of one really nice throw from KJ Jefferson to uh, Mike Woods, 75 yard touchdown. It was a beautiful throw. It hit Mike Woods in stride. And I know a lot of, a lot of hog fans obviously are aware of who he is, but some other, maybe some, some fans who aren't familiar with him, he ended up being one of the better deep threat receivers not just in the SEC West, but in all the SEC. I mean, the guy was spectacular. Of course, it helps when you got someone like Felipe Franks with that big arm who has a pretty good ball placement on balls beyond 35 yards. That's always helpful. But Mike Woods just, uh, man, he turns and burns. He can get downfield quick. He runs those fade and go routes beautifully. And he gets such great separation. And you saw that in the scrimmage. In fact, the University of Arkansas Twitter showed the video, and it was pretty well It was shared on across social media. It was nice to see that, and and uh, but other than that, there really just didn't seem to be a lot of, you know, quarterback to receiver. I, I guess in this stage with year two going into Kendall Bryles, you kind of wanted to see a little bit more uh, pitch and catch, right? Like this with with the talent that you have at the skill position uh, from your from Traylon Burks, who's possibly a first round draft pick, to Mike Woods, who I think will end up getting drafted. Uh, and and Knox, who's been there now, this will be year three. You kind of want to see, I don't know, you want to see them. It should have looked a lot easier than it did. But, you know, this first scrimmage, which I was not at, I was actually down in Florida. Uh, KJ, and I think both him and Millie Cornsby looked a lot better. But in this one, they just weren't in sync. Sam Pittman talked about with the after the scrimmage, he was talking with the media, and he had stated that, you know, some of the team had – they were given their shots, the COVID-19 shots, and he thought maybe that might have played a role into the fact that there wasn't a whole lot of energy from the offense. But, um, yeah, not a lot of – not a lot of what you expect to see with Kendall Bryles offensive coordinator uh, with his with his offense. Again, it's just second scrimmage. Uh, and also, this is – for someone like Sam Pittman, this is his very – first spring camp as a head football coach i think people need to remember that like we're still kind of going through the motions a little bit yeah people definitely want to see connection in the passing game it's exciting it produces points obviously it's become a passing oriented game yeah. uh, in the last several years in college football but if there's not going to be connections made in the passing game you want it because there's defensive pressure on the quarterback mm -hmm. or there's pass breakups downfield. Not that wide receivers were open by four yards and the quarterbacks just missed them continually or they were dropped passes, that there was defense to limit some of that passing offense. So did we legitimately see anything, do you think, out of the defense? Well, so there was a – it was kind of later on. They were practicing – I think it was when they were practicing situationals. And they had Traylon Burks run a fade down the sidelines 
Arkansas, some people may have forgotten about this young man, uh, Trent Gordon, five foot 11, 185 pounds uh, corner out of Penn State, just transferred here, was toe to toe, ran down the sidelines with Traylon Burks. Again, you're talking about a possible first round receiver. And this isn't, uh, you know, Burks is a six foot three and a half, 235 pound horse. It's like it's like trying to cover a horse. I was really impressed with with Trent Gordon on that uh, defending that route, and I don't know that he stood out much during the spring. I think that was technically practice number nine. I think they're allowed. You may know about this more than I do. I think they're allowed sixteen spring practices. Maybe that varies conference to conference. Yes. Um, but I was pretty impressed by that, and and there were some moments there where the defense was making plays, and and you have to give them credit. Jalen Catalan. Uh, had a couple of moments. He had a big hit there early on in the scrimmage. There was a 75-yard run by TJ Hammonds, and I think that was just a missed assignment by one of the linebackers. But outside of those two plays, and again, the Mike Woods pass that I was talking about earlier was actually called back because they had a uh, they, they had a flag on the play. I think it was an illegal man downfield. But overall, I thought it was a defensive favored scrimmage. It the the, the tempo definitely favored them. Uh, Bumper Pool and Morgan, who didn't really – I didn't notice Pool out there quite a bit. He's an all-conference caliber linebacker. You got Morgan out there, who's an All-American. Catalan, who's an All-American. A guy that also stood out, who is working his way into rotation last year. Actually, he's working his way into the ones. Last year, he was a rotating guy. Simeon Blair. He had an interception. I'm pretty sure he had at least one other pass defended, and I don't know how many tackles, but they called that cat's name over the intercom. I swear a dozen times. Uh, he was all over the field. I was really impressed with him. Dorian Gerald, number one Juco defensive end. I can't remember what class that was. I want to say 20, 2018, 2017, one of those. But uh, he's a Chad Morris. He was a Chad Morris recruit, if I remember right. But he, he's he been hurt the entire time he's been here. And we know he's got such a high ceiling if he could stay healthy. And something else that I always noticed, he kind of took plays off. He stood out in the scrimmage. I think he technically would have been given at least two sacks, but he was in the backfield almost, it seemed like every other snap, and it forced Malik Hornsby to do his thing, you know, run out of the pocket, try to force him to get uncomfortable. But um, defense definitely deserves a, a good pat on the back. I think the scrimmage was – was the scales were tipped in their favor in this second scrimmage. Got Ty Hudson on the line from Pig Trail Network. Uh, please check out his work right there covering Arkansas football. Of course, the Hogs are about halfway through their spring sessions, and the red and white game is scheduled for April 17th. If you want an Arkansas mask, you can get one for free at uh, voiceofcollegefootball.com. Please check us out at voiceofcollegefootball.com. You get a free mask. We've got about 35 teams there, 20% off your first purchase. If you so choose, and you get uh, entered into a $25 gift card giveaway. And even if you don't want any of that, please check us out at voiceofcollegefootball.com. We are just launching that and building out that uh, platform there. All right. So we're set with the first scrimmage and what happened there. Is this basically KJ Jefferson's job? What are the odds that uh, he hangs on to it? Is it a battle? It's a battle. Um, I do think it's KJ's job to lose, but you know Sam Pittman said something that was pretty eye-opening when he said that he was talking about KJ and just you know the 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 missed passes, you know the the inaccuracy that he's thrown with. By the way, that's nothing new. I mean, he had that issue a year ago, even in the Mizzou game where he came in and and was terrific. He still had some overthrows. And I think he still, I, I swear, the guy tries to take – he reminds me of Ryan Mallett on underneath throws. He tries to take your hand off. And uh, he needs to let up a little bit on those underneath throws or the check down throws. But I do think he's got a high ceiling. But Sam Pittman said that I thought we'd be further along in talking about K.J. Jefferson. And, and, and I was having this discussion with a friend of mine. I said, boy, if that doesn't if, – if that – if that's not an alarm or a red flag for KJ, I don't know what else is. They He should be further along, and I do agree with that. Again, I'm sure some of that's just Sam trying to rile up the troops, you know, and trying to get them to understand that, you know, this is, you know, this is for real. We, there's no more excuses. There's no COVID got in the way. Of course, COVID is still a very real thing. Teams are having to overcome. Players are getting vaccinated, as we mentioned earlier. 
but this is it, you know, and, and uh, you're going to get a, it looks like they're going to get an uninter- uninterrupted off season. It's time to, you know, full throttle. And the fact that they, they look so out of sync and again, first scrimmage, I think his numbers were pretty impressive. Something like 12 of 15 throwing with only a couple of incompletions with a pick. And uh, this game, it was like everything was off outside again, outside of that really good throw. But I thought Sam Pittman saying that was pretty alarming. Uh, but KJ, I think it is his job to lose Hornsby. And here's the thing. And I know there's, we do this every time there's this quarterback battle and the same thing we had last year with the running back battle. Is it Rakeem Boyd? Is it Traylon Smith? It ended up being Traylon Smith and he probably should have gotten a few more carries earlier on in the year may have, or should have been RB one. I'll agree with that. But now we've got this team KJ Jefferson camp team Hornsby camp. And it's like, well, see, he he Hornsby's going to end up being the guy. Well, here's the thing: Hornsby put the ground the ball on the ground like three times, and he was just as inaccurate, if not more. His deep ball placement, I mean, he was overthrowing guys by a mile. So I don't think either one of them did anything to move the needle in one way or the other. In fact, you you might argue that Hornsby may have taken a little bit of a step back, but fortunately for him, this is still so early on. We've got a lot of football left, a lot of spring and fall camp left. Absolutely. It's not time to get alarmed, but there's certainly uh, a situation in which coaches want two quality players to push each other and have a difficult decision from that standpoint, not the, uh, they're both screwing up. Who do we take as uh, the guy that we've got to pencil somebody in? But there's a lot of football left to be played. As we said, Uh, we're about 10 days as of this recording before the actual spring game. And then even once we hit that, These guys are going to get together in June for individual workouts before they even hit the field for the first week of August, where there's a full month before the start of the season. So a lot of time to develop and improve. No question about that.